But I believe that even as I hope we are able to resolve that diplomatically, the export of extremism around the region and elsewhere is still a problem. In other words, that the problem is not simply a weapon, but a weapon with an ideology. And this, this ideology and those groups that are associated with it, when we come to analyze it, what is it? It's essentially a closed philosophy. These different groups of extremists who are linked together by a perversion of the proper faith of Islam, these extremists, they believe there is one truth, theirs. One legitimacy, the one they own, one answer, one faith. And when we close our minds to the possibility of the other, when we end up in the face of a world that is opening up the whole time, we close down. That is when we get the threat and the challenge. And where we are confronted militarily, we have to stand up militarily. But in the end, the best way to defeat a bad idea is by a good one. And that is not just freedom and democracy and justice, important though those concepts are. It is also about being open, facing tomorrow with confidence. And when we analyze the countries that will succeed in the modern world, they are those countries that are prepared to be open, that reject not just the methods of extremism, but reject the philosophy behind it. The countries that succeed will be the countries that develop their human capital, all of it, and develop it based on merit and not on privilege. And if that is true, the countries that succeed will be those that give women equal rights with men. Not just, not just because it is right to do so, but because otherwise we waste the human capital of the nation. It is why racial bigotry is not just immoral, it is foolish. And why bigotry of faith is not just something antisocial in the modern world but something that repels the very things that make the modern world worthwhile. This is how nations today succeed. This is what tomorrow is about. Not countries shut down, but countries innovative, creative, imaginative, constantly inspired by the possibility of change, not frightened by its impact. And so when the Prime Minister today said, and the President also spoke, of climate change and the challenge of it. And they talked, and we saw some of the film about the, the extraordinary ideas going on in electric vehicles, which we also hope to do in the United Kingdom. Solar power, it's a little bit of a struggle for us, but, but how how are these things going to be done? Yes, they're going to be done by bright, clever young people, as we've just seen, but they're going to be developed in California and Bangalore and in Beijing, as well as in Tel Aviv and in other places of the world. And what's more, these people are going to talk to each other and they're going to learn from each other and they're going to develop with each other. And they're not going to ask whether someone is white or black or brown or yellow they will simply ask, what are their qualities as a human being? What can they give? What can they offer? What can they do for the future, the common future of all of us? So when I, in the work that I do, reflect 
on the Israel and Palestine question. Yes, it's about negotiations. And it's about boundaries and it's about changes on the ground. But it's also about changes in the mind. When I've visited the Prime Minister's home and in the study there is a map on the wall, which is a big map of this region and beyond this region. And frankly, when you see the size of all these different countries, you have to go quite close to the map to see Israel and the Palestinian territory. And when we think about how much this means, despite this small territory, how much it means, not just to you, of course, primarily to you, but not just to you, but to all of us. The question that is often asked is, why is it so important to achieve peace? And I always reply, because peace is a symbol, not simply of enmities that are past and set aside, but of the opportunities of the future that are to be grasped. But you know, the question that's less often asked is why are the opponents of peace so keen to deny the possibility of peace? And that is, I'm afraid, because they also understand the symbolism. And they know that if we were able to achieve peace between Israelis and Palestinians, that would not simply be to the enormous benefit of those that live here and those that live in the Palestinian territory. It would be of profound significance to the whole of humankind. Because to go back to where I was earlier today, Hebron, the resting place of Abraham, he came out of Mesopotamia and came to Haran, an immigrant in a strange land. And the faith that he had, that because it was based on values and not on icons or idols, became universal and gave rise to my faith as well as yours. And we reflect on our history and we recognize it. And we reflect on the conflict. And we reflect on those that have died over a long period of time in this conflict and others. But we also then reflect on the progress. And when I come to Israel and I see it and I think of how years ago, when I think the British may have had something to do with things around here. And I reflect how this country began and what it created. The attitude of mind that created it was not a closed mind. It was a mind open, confident, full of the possibilities of the future. You know the Chinese? have a word for crisis, Wei Qi, which is also means opportunity. And when I was reflecting on President Paris's conference and what I would say today, I thought I would conclude by saying this, that in every crisis and in every challenge, are the seeds of opportunity and hope. It is not impossible to overcome the crises or the challenges. And you know what shows that this is true? What shows this is true is the progress of humankind for all its difficulties. And that progress is based ultimately not on values that are confined to one faith, one race, one creed, or one color. They are the values, the universal values of the human spirit. 
And if we can capture that spirit in our discussion and debate about tomorrow, we can maybe understand better yesterday, do more to help today, and make the tomorrow of my children and yours a brighter one, a better one, a more prosperous one, and yes, a more peaceful one too. Thank you.